innovation over, as uh, she said, our job is to make all these ideas around Norway possible, together with the companies. And we do it in all areas. And what I'm seeing now, that all areas now, more or less, are within the green sector. Because if we see uh, the risks in the world, the big risks, and you can see this is from uh, World Economic Forum last year. The blue is about financial, but a lot of the financial is also the green ones. And the, what is environment is green, but you see that the red water is one of the lacking problems in the world. And what should we do with clean water? We are, and then the next one is food. They say that food will be a scarcity in the world when we come up to 9 million people, and that will happen pretty soon. And we have used, as was the main part of hydro earlier, fertilizer was what they did. And they said fertilizers has made it possible for us to support us from four to seven billion. But you cannot use more fertilizers to support people from seven to nine millions. Because it used so much energy and it's so demanding. And agriculture is using 70% of the fresh water in the world. So how should we feed our people? I said in water, we have, I will come back, a lot of industry in Norway, but we also have it in food because we have sustainable fisheries, which I will come back to. And then we see uh, materials. I think what uh, Sven was saying is that we do materials in Norway in a sustainable way as few other. And that is, I think, partly because we are so lucky we have hydro as an energy source compared with others. But we do, we have the resources the world will need. So, and that the last one is the climate. I was lucky to be in Beijing the day where 150 planes could not go because the air was so polluted. When I left my hotel room, I could eat the air. But that is not Beijing. Most of the big cities in Asia has air that, in average, is 140, between 135 to 160 ppt per something. I'm an engineer, so I can say per something, even though I'm a female. And when it passed 110, Bergen is stopping, and we say we cannot do anything in Bergen. And they have an average. They don't let the kids go out. And we need to have and come with product that can help these people, because this is going to be the big cities is the biggest part of the growth in the world GDP. And it's good that people are living in cities, but it's also dangerous for the people if we cannot solve the problem. So I mean that Norway has a lot to bring to the table. And the, we start last year, the Minister for Trade and Industry and Minister for Environment made a white paper on green growth uh, policy. And I think that we have that as going from we have to do something with the environment to say we have to use the technology to do something with it, to help it being better. And I think working together with the industries is mandatory to solve this problem we see around the world with the climate, with the air, with the water, with the food scarities, and that is technology. And they put up a program of 500 million Norwegian kroners over three years, and we have Innovation Norway is responsible for that, to commercialize these ideas. And we work together with all these organizations in Norway. For those who are not Norwegian, 
Norway is a long country, but we are a small country. And we cooperate together, the organization, instead of competing with each other. And I think that makes us possible to do things. In some areas now it's a discussion, is it good to cooperate and work together? For me, that we work together, the university, the industry and the organization make things happen easily. And then we must pass what is good and what is not bad with that. But I think this is the strength of Norway. And we should build on our strengths, and we see that. We have world-class clusters in Norway within three areas, they said. Maritime, energy, oil and gas, and then we have it in marine. And we do clean tech on this. We work with that, we try to make uh, the knowledge we had from maritime, we used it to the oil and gas, and now we put it to the next S-curve, the new renewable energy on wind, on solar, who comes from the process industry, even though this industry, as I, we also heard this morning when uh, Sheikha from uh, Abu Dhabi, I don't remember her last name, she was wonderful, she said about the problem this industry had, but that is also part of the solution. But we also have the uh, hydropower and the energy system that the rest of the world is wanting and striving to have, and we do that internationally. If you see this boat, the Expo, this is a Norwegian design, a boat to use less energy than any other supply boat. And it's not that it uses less energy, it's even better for the people who work on the boat. And the person who is most satisfied is the chef, because he can make food in all kinds of weather, because this boat is more stable than any other. And we have to think about that. And then we have the process industry, which in our country is built on hydro, so it's a clean industry. And I think what Sven was saying in what hydro is doing within aluminium is very exciting in this area. And we have to think like that. But then we always talk about that and we say that fishery, that is something different. Do you people in this room know that between Norway and Russia and Iceland is one of the few places in the world where the wild fish crop is thriving? That is because we have used science to try to fish, and then we have used regulations. And that means that the herring, the cod, the caplin, and the mackerel has never been as good as now. And if you are interested in international politics, you see that one of the problems in Africa, in India, is that the wild fish is gone, and then the people have to do other things to survive, because they have to go further and further out. We have made our fishery sustainable. And then we also have doing ag aquaculture with less pollution, less medicine, and we now try to do the anim we do the animal welfare, and when we have problem, we use science and we work together to solve this problem. So our aquaculture should be and is sustainable. And the world needs these proteins because if we are going to feed nine million people, this is one of the important part of what we should do. So I say that Norway has a strength within all of this area where the world is one. And we have examples of this within areas, like uh, maritime transport. One of the problems is ballast water, because you bring small, uh, small animals from one place to another, and then you destroy the environment. We have two companies that work with that. We have new energy, even though we in Norway have hydro as a strength, we have doing that within offshore wind, other wind, and uh, sun energy. 
And Trunder Energy in Uganda built the first modern hydroelectrical plant in Africa in 14 years. And Dinovec has made no delivering to hydroelectrical in Peru because of technology. And I think all of you know what Cambi is because they won the prize yesterday for the most innovative uh, product company here in Technoport. And they use the sewage from Obama and make clean energy. I think it's from him too, because they work in Washington. It sounds more sexy when I say Obama, but they do that. And Borregor is a good example of an old industry who works in paper and pulp, going from that to higher and higher technology to use the fibers from wood. And that is important. And then we have, we in Norway, we work together in clusters. And our best clusters is the Norwegian Center of Expertise. They are within, and if you see, we have, uh, this is the one we have. And those I put in the, on the top, uh, those eight are those who are mostly within the green industry, because even the maritime, the system engineering, micro and nano, instrumentation, if you talk about energy trading, that's easy to think about, but these are within this problem we have to solve together by using the technology all of us need. And then we have those who are on a lower scale, they are more regional. And if you see those who are, I have highlighted, they are within this industry. And all of these are exporting, developing new product that will more than any others in Norway be part of the solution. Because we have to think like that. If you see Arena Eide, Sam Eide was one of our old industrialists in Norway, worked together with Birkeland, who you have on the 200 notes in Norway. They are working with the process industry in the south of Norway to develop new environment-friendly product out of their technology to, uh, to launch them. We have two within water, smart water and uh, the water clusters in south. We have two within the wind technology, and we have smart grid and RENA oil spill. I think these are interesting, and working together give better results than working by themselves, is what they are seeing. So, we see that these companies, the ARENA, uh, they are part of the ARENA, and those who are part of the NC, they enhance better people, and that is one of the problems in Norway. We are lack of good people. They have a lot higher export, and they have a higher innovative part than the rest of the industry. So working together give good results for all of us. And I would like to say in the end that for me, the Norwegian industry, both the old one, because we have to develop from the old one our strength, to the new one, have a good future because most of they are part of the solution the world is aching for because they see problems we are so lucky we don't see. We are over 5 million people in this big area. Thank you.